I'm Warren Meyer. I taught band in Kingsley summer of, from uh, 1956 to 1969. 13 wonderful years with wonderful people. Can you tell about contests a little bit? Any good stories about contests? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I guess it's hard to remember good stories. It's, I, don't, I don't remember any bad ones. I should remember the bad ones. Those are the ones that taught me a lot of lessons. But yeah, we had, I was fortunate. The man who preceded me, Joe Darwich, had set up a wonderful program. He had a wonderful organization of boosters, music boosters, band boosters, as they were. And uh, it was easy to follow somebody like him because the kids were already ready to go. And, and uh, it just seemed to grow from there. It's a wonderful place to be, wonderful people to be with. And I don't know, I didn't, I guess when I first came here, I thought I knew everything. And a couple weeks later, I knew I didn't, but I grew. And I band grew too, and I was lucky. Which did you like better, concert or the marching? Or well, we had more of our glory in the marching band because basically that's uh, that's what the people see, and that's what you sell your program on, and that's what you see at the football games, that's what you see at the parades, and uh, that's when the kids have a real sense of pride because they're they're so obviously doing something. Music is actually the most important part of it, and. And the greatest satisfaction is being able to produce real music. And uh, that's, that took a little longer to get to that point, but we got so we could play pretty well with some of the wonderful talent, your sister, <laughs> and others that uh, were, were part of the program. It's hard for me to remember who was in the band at what time and who made it good at that time, and they all seem to fit. Can you tell a little about rehearsals or practices and stuff, when, when, they, when they took place? and Well, Marching band practice often started at 7 o'clock in the morning when the field was wet or sometimes snow on the ground. And uh, sometimes we practiced at night and had to turn lights on. Of course in the morning too, actually. Uh, it was a long ways from the school. So practices were on, on the field down there were a little hard because we had to go so far. But I don't remember how we did it, but we did it. What, what do you do? When did you, did you, who orchestra, who came up with the choreo choreography and stuff? Did you do all that or the, the uh, routines and stuff? Who? The routines and stuff? I guess I pretty much did them and, but uh, nothing was ever new. It's always borrowed somebody else's idea from someplace. I used to get terrific ideas when I went back to Michigan in the summer. I used to go back to Michigan, to the University of Michigan, where there was a, a band conference every summer under Ravelli and, and guys like that that were gods in the music build, music world and I heard wonderful music bands, I won wonderful bands, I don't talk very well, you know, like they'd bring them down from Interlochen and of course the Ann Arbor schools and things like that and, and uh, always hearing new music and new ideas and talking with other band directors in that part of the country and I guess all the ideas I ever came up with either came from that or from somewhere else I saw them. Sometimes just watching bands on television. Except we didn't have television. Where did I see them? I guess films. <laughs> um, my sister tells a story, maybe it's an urban legend, but she says one time that you were late to band practice and she and Janelle Swanberg started the practice without you and you woke up to hear the band playing. Does that ring a bell or was that just something she told? I guess it's beginning to ring a bell, but I'd forgotten that. You know, you only remember the good things. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that did happen. I think we were probably living across the the street from the from the practice field down there from the football field and uh, that happened I do remember one time that I slept in and the band was to go to Ames for a band day and we were to leave very early in the morning I you can't remember the time all I know is that I was asleep and my landlady was very deaf and they had an awful time arousing anybody but we finally got me out and we got there on time and that was kind of a disappointing day because when we got there, it had been raining, we didn't get to go on the field anyway, is that in the stands. Um, so where did you live? When, when you first came into town, you were a bachelor? Yep. And where did you live? I lived in what was Don Page's house, when he wasn't Don Page, right in the corner of the school. I can't remember the people that lived there at the time. Don Page moved in there later. And then I moved from there down to Mrs. Pratt, which was down the street on the left side. And her name was Agnes Pratt. 
and she's a wonderful lady. Uh, I met her two sons today, Lyle and uh, uh, can't think of the other one, but anyway. Okay. And I stayed there almost all the time until Stan Crush and uh, Richard Crush and I got an apartment down across that across from the, the football field. And that was owned by the who was the who was the editor of the Kingsley Times at the time. Anyway, that's okay, where yeah, they, no. yeah. Uh, that was always right from the beginning that you know the football team didn't want anybody else on that field and we needed it and I used it a lot you know when I came here we put five yard lines down all the way down because a marching band uses that they weren't doing that before it was 10 10 until they got to the 40 I guess or 45 they had five yard lines down there and but hey they shouldn't complain I lined that field a thousand times <laughs> did it with the help of football coaches and other people Actually, I thought we got along pretty well, just the guys, oh, in fact, when we first started here, this is probably made the football team matter than anything, but before the band was very big, I used those football players. We'd carry their horns and their hats down there, and during halftime, they joined the band and, and played in the band. Then as we grew, that didn't become necessary anymore. <laughs>